All right. So today we have a new phone from Samsung, the Galaxy F54 5G. Now the F series from Samsung are known for good specs, but at a more affordable price. It is similar to the premium A series phone, but with slight key differences. So this comes with the Exynos 1380 processor, a 108 megapixel main camera with OIS, and a massive 6000 mAh battery. All of this for a rumored price of around 30,000 rupees. So the question that has to be asked is. Does this phone make any compromise? Well, the answer may surprise you, so stay tuned till the end of the video. Let's go. Okay, so you get this box, slim trim. Inside you get the phone, some paperwork, Type-C to Type-C cable, and a good-looking SIM ejector tool. That's it. Short unboxing. Now, the first thing that you will notice is that the phone looks very similar to the S series. Like, let me show you. This is the S23 and this is the F54. See, the design and everything is almost the same. Like, there's no separate camera island. It is part of the back panel now. And we saw this even on the premium A54. So, Samsung is now making the design universal. Let me know in the comment section if you like that or not. I for think it is good for affordable phones like the F54. The phone looks and feels premium. Like, if you use this in public, people will probably think you have the Samsung S23. 23 series. So, nice. The only concern I have with the design is, see the silver variant we have here is also a fingerprint magnet. Also, we have had this device only for day and you can see it has picked up a few scratches. Or you can opt for this blue variant. Samsung calls it Meteor Blue. Other than that, the side and back is made from polycarbonate and see it weighs around 200 grams, which is good. And I almost forgot, this has a hybrid SIM card slot. So, two SIM card or one SIM plus one micro SD card. So you can extend the storage to 1 TB in case you want it. And do you guys still use micro SD card? On the front, you get a 6.7 inch full HD 120Hz Super AMOLED display. And Samsung is known for making really good displays. So this is no exception. Like see, I'll play the trailer of the flash. It has all the dark as well as bright scenes and see in all of them, it looks so good on this display. Now, yes, you can also play HDR in YouTube. This is with most phones these days. But on the F54, you also have HDR support on Netflix. A lot of you guys ask for it. So if you have a top tier Netflix subscription, you can watch HDR movies and web series. Now, yes, the phone does have slightly bigger bezels like see the chin over here. However, few hours into using this phone, I got so used to it. And when I'm watching movies, they don't bother that much. But Samsung did two things here to keep the cost down and those could bother some. First is the speakers. See, the sound is fine, like clarity and all is good, but it is a single speaker. Samsung could have given dual speakers here. However, credit where it is due, you get gestures in this fingerprint sensor. So if I do this, see the notification panel slides down. Personally, I still prefer side-mounted fingerprint scanner. I don't know about the internet. Okay, so now we have come outside in this heat because it's camera time. And bold statement, personal opinion, I feel Samsung has the best software processing across their devices. So the F54 comes with three cameras and you get a 108 megapixel main camera with OIS. And outdoors during daytime, I would say the pictures are pretty good. Like see this picture in front of the stall, the pink of my shirt, the stall, and even the green trees behind me are proper in terms of color. Like even if you zoom in 2x, it has enough details. Or see this picture of me in the park, the HDR sharpness and everything is proper. And even in portrait mode, the background blur, face cutout, they all seem good. So here's the fun thing. If I go into the camera and I go over here, there is this fun mode. And now I can take pictures like this, this. It also has an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle camera and it is decent for the best part. Like see this picture, it looks good in first glance. Again, even in this picture, it looks nice. And if you zoom in, there is less detail. And of course, of course, you get a 2 megapixel macro camera. Also, you get a lot of AI options in the gallery like this AI enhancer mode. But here's my favorite one. So now if you go to object eraser, you also get erase shadows and erase reflection. And this feature only exists in the FE and Galaxy S flagship series. So seeing this shot, if I press on erase shadows, it is so neat. It removes all the shadows beneath this baby Yoda and now the photo looks good. Also, you get a lot of camera options. So you have this hyperlapse mode and this one's really good. Now we tried taking this astrolapse. It looks really wonderful, but you know, Delhi weather is very moody. There is cloud some days, there is star. So we got the cloud part. Even if you don't want to wake up the entire night, you can do this quick time lapse of this cars going by in this traffic. It looks absolutely beautiful. Also, when you're in the default camera mode and there is very less light, it automatically switches to night mode. And when you click a photo, it takes some time and gives you a bright and sharp photo. Coming to the front, you get a 32 megapixel selfie camera. And selfies from it are good, like the color tone, HDR, skin tone, everything looks good. Also, it can do 4K 30 FPS on the front camera. At least some company understands like it is important to have 4K on the front camera. 
Thank you. Also, you can do 4K 30 FPS on the main camera, and you can have an idea of the video and mic quality. So overall, I would say in my first impression, the Samsung's camera looks really good. But remember, in the beginning of the video, I said it has one massive feature. Well, it has a massive 6,000 mAh battery. It should easily last you one day in heavy use and two days in light and medium use. Now, the only concern I have with Samsung in this department is charging. See, this has a maximum of 25 watt charging, so it will take you around two hours to get it fully charged, and you'll have to buy the charger separately. So, this comes with the Exynos 1380 5 nanometer processor, 8 GB LPDDR4 RAM, 256 GB UFS storage. So, in normal day to day usage, like browsing the web, watching video, and all of that, I didn't find any lag or anything. I even ran N22 benchmark, and it scored around 4.4 lakh. But there was some glitch because see the GPU score is zero. But ideally the score should be more than 5,10,000. Now the one issue with most Exynos phone is heating. So for first we ran the CPU throttling test. This runs the CPU at 100% and see the graph is all green. There is no overheating or as such. Now finally let's play some BGMI. BGMI is back guys. So what are you playing these days? So the maximum settings you get is high FPS in balanced graphics. And now let's... Go, why don't I have any clothes? Just killed someone. Double tap. I'll take it. What does he have? He has nothing. <laughs> no, no point killing him. So yes, I would say the performance for this price is okay. Coming to the software, there is an interesting thing. See, Samsung is the GOAT of Android experience. So out of the box, this comes with Android 13 and it is running on full One UI. Also, Samsung promises four years of software updates and five years of security update, which is the maximum years of update Android has. It is even more than Android's own Pixel phones. Now, since this is One UI, you get some additional features. Like see, you can record calls without announcement or Samsung wallet. So you can add your credit card and other details and this also has NFC so you can just tap the phone to make payments. We did a complete video on Samsung's One UI feature. You can go and check that out after watching this video. And special mention to the haptics. Samsung has really improved the vibration here. I can't show this on camera, but typing on this feels the same as typing on the S23 Ultra. And that phone, of course, is a flagship phone. And the main reason is you get a different linear haptic motor in this. So yeah, that was the all new Samsung F54 5G. Now to answer the question, does this phone cut corners? Well, it does, but smartly. Like it has a single speaker and plastic bag, but you get Samsung Wallet, four years of OS update, 108 megapixel OIS camera. So all of that, it's good. Okay, so we just got to know the price of F54. The launch price is 29999 and you get 2000 bank cash back. So the price comes down to 2799. Now we have only used this phone for two days. So we need to test it further. Maybe we can compare it with other phones. Let us know which phones you want us to compare with. Until then, this is Pradeep signing off. See you in the next video. Pew, pew.